Good morning, YouTube. It's Chief here from KR Graphics, and I'm back with another video. And this one, this is my favorite part of my character design. This is where I, I, I put the face on the man, where I create the personality that you will see in the game. And, and also, too, you get to play around with some anatomy stuff, which is always great if you're a character artist. So let's get right to it. You know, I was so excited today, I couldn't wait. So, if you saw our last video, I um, I worked on adding wrinkles and details to to his robe, his robe and parts, of, his robe and parts of his belt here. Um, recently, I recently added um some some buttons, which would be used as a, as a three D detail. Now, my past models, I would use my past models. You know, I would use normal mapping and you know have the button part of the jet, have the button. You know, part of the coat mesh and all that stuff. But I think for this one, I want to go a little differently. I want to like you know really experiment with like using three three D normals on a model. And here's the actually here's the um the mesh itself, the little poly version of the button. I will I will most likely change this later. You know, right, I'm looking right looking looking at it now. I am um, it might be a, a little too dense for. I'm doing it with, but you know, this character's for a fighting game, so I'm not necessarily worried about you know density right now. And I'm on a camera today because I'm, I'm on a camera today because I am um, dealing with um, allergies and getting hot in Boston, and you know what that is, you know, pollen everywhere. So, and I'm, and I'm also dealing with sniffling and you know, hay fever and whatnot. But anyway, let's get right to it. We're gonna start, we're gonna take this head here. Have happily extracted, and we're going to. And for today's video, we're actually going to go ahead and work on work on the cranium of the head. You know, that's 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 a, that's a usual go-to when I create characters. It helps me with, with structuring and placement of detail later on down the line. So let's begin by working on the skull. You might you probably notice too that I um. Ball, ball this head mesh from the body and over here real quick. You know, bottom from this and I created a mask on it and everything. So so quick the head, I just put the mask off and extracted it. This and then capped the bottom. And the reason why we the reason why I use a the uh, have the head by itself is so that in the sculpting phase we're gonna have as much detail as we desire. So I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna hide the head. The rest, the rest of the thumb tools, and, and just have the eye, and just have the eyes, teeth, and tongue in position. Basically, if I go ahead, if I go, if I go ahead here and hide everything, this is this is um these are, these are the characters' eyes, teeth, and tongue. Um, this is what I normally use when I'm, you know, when working on characters. You know, um, my recollections, teeth. Were um, I think they're created from a scan. I'm not sure. I'm not sure when I had these, but these have served to be a really good, really good way of um getting realistic teeth and characters. And since you know you're not seeing the mouth, you, you know you're never you're never seeing the character's teeth up close anyway. It wouldn't matter very much unless it's like a movie or something. So head back here. And if, and if you've seen my past videos where I model faces and heads, um, I use diamond mesh. But for this one, I want to approach this a little differently. So without further ado, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a panel here, get a perspective, so that I can you know model model things a little bit easier orthographically. And turn on my floor. And on my floor, you'll see you'll see um you'll see a skull right you'll see references skull references, front side. In the back. Now, normally, of course, now normally using references, you know, I've done, I've done this all before, but it doesn't hurt to have reference when you're working your modeling, especially working on characters and creatures. I am, I am, I, I would also be following this as well. This is um, a program called um, Human Anatomy, Human Anatomy Atlas, and it's made by a company. It's made by a company called. Um, what do they call it? It's called um, Visible Body. 
and I recommend this highly for anyone who does characters, you know, you know whether for a game or or for a film or even for practice. I highly, I highly, highly recommend this program for you know just for even for anatomy study, you know, a program like this will help you will help you um with um you know, with better with better sculpting with better sculpting and understanding your body better. And, and at times, and at times when I'm sculpting my um, you know, when you pass this, I'll I'll be referencing this as well. It also has the muscles as well. So you can see everything. And I reckon that of course we're gonna in course I'm gonna be focusing on the um the superficial layer of muscle on the character's face. So we're gonna focus on that today. So let's get back to ZBrush and we're gonna start massaging the forms in the face here. So first, I'm gonna start moving around the form a little bit, you know, following the reference as closely as possible. And remember my pizza analogy. You know, do not be do not be in a hurry to get to, to get to the toppings. You know, to, to enjoy the pizza, to enjoy the pizza, make sure you know, make sure your dough is right. Go ahead and smooth this out a little bit. You know, and you basically you basically want to move your model around the screen. You know, basically, you want you, you want to move the model in such a way that you know you'll encompass every you'll see everything you you'll see the entire model at all angles. And I've learned I've learned a lot of I learned a lot about this technique from other artists in the past, and that information was so invaluable to me. You know, I I can I can I can not see myself. You know, doing this without reference. And when in his neck, in his neckline, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make his neck a little thinner, just so that you know, because the character I'm working with, the character I'm building for my game is not very muscular. And actually, I do the same thing with his body as well. I'm gonna hide the body for a second. I'll show everything. Not only that too, but I I remember I remember that his the character is muscular, so I want to go ahead and lower this level. This one, and and, and I think also when I finish this, I'm going I'm going to project the um. Actually, I could probably do that too. I could probably project, you know, the, top of the head on the body after I finish it. So basically, you want to um, this base mesh here will be used in Marvin's designer. Future, for, for for future costumes for this character, you know, and I want to make sure that the form is the same. All right, so anyway, we have to scratch to his head. And you notice too that you notice too you see the um the image in the background. You use ZBrush, you go to draw, go to draw, and change the film width to three. You put on two, you can't see. You put on two, you can't see it. So I usually will put in, put in three and model from that and change the um, edge factor so you can see everything more clearly. And also too, to fit the, the image plans, you um you, 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 you go to draw panel and you click on your um swatch, you click on import. Alright, so let's go back to the modeler. I'm gonna pull in this little jaw here. You notice how in none of that, notice how I've seen I've symmetry enabled on this um on this model here. And it's important to turn the model around, you know, to you know turn you know top of the top of the viewport, you know, do not stay in one place when you're, when you're sculpting the Z brush. It is highly basically it's highly imperative that you move around your model, you know, and get a feel for your design. I've done it for four a few times, so I, I can I'm probably gonna move a little bit quicker through this. And also also also, too, the um, the skull would help us with proportions as well. So now that I have the form fleshed out, I'm gonna go ahead and use a clay tubes brush. And this is a brush I often use when I'm when I'm doing when I'm working my sculpts. And first, we're gonna film the eye sockets. That's a very important area of your of your model. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the background. And also, and also too, I'm gonna to take my atlas and drag it off screen, so that I can um, 
Somebody, somebody didn't give me the reference center or anything. I can always look at, I can always turn the, um, turn the program, look, look at the facial detail muscles on the guy's face. <laughs> now, we're not, now, we won't be going too crazy with the detail as far as the, um, the crane is concerned. You only want the, you only want the, you know, the mass of it so that it would be, e so be easier to create the, um, the skin, the skin and muscle on top of all this. I'm kind of going in and tracing around this um, skull here. And not only that too, it's um, if you if you ever use um, if you ever use references for your modeling, I recommend highly. You know, trace you know basically, basically you know, but doing anatomy and, and sculpting work, it's very important to try to get a feel for your design. And you notice now too how the eyes reveal themselves under the under the bottom layers. I turn the model now. You can now see the um, eye socket. Now I'm just, go, I'm just going in and I'm just going in and just sculpting the form. Caref sculpting the form carefully, in the feel for the uh, getting the feel for it. You know, move. You know, take your model, move it around a little bit. That's the beauty of 3D. Take your model, move it around a little bit. You know, that's right. In this early, in the, at least for me, in this early stage, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just need to make sure the form, the form right. You know, the structure. Make sure, make sure, make sure the structure, everything you want. So kind of some kind of filling in the eye socket here. So that's a very important element too. You fill in the fill in the eye socket and make sure that um, yeah. That it feels right to you. I mean, knowing that too, we also knowing that too, we, we also have um, we we have, we have a skeleton, you know, our own bones in the face. You know, definitely, you know, definitely use that as a reference. Actually, go ahead and that's the edge a little bit from the wheel. So it's a little better. Needs me to read too. All right, and now and now we work on the um. The nasal cavity. So go ahead and sand the brush. And, and yes, you know, in real life, real human faces are symmetrical. But for right now, though, we need to be symmetrical so that's easier to so that's easier to work from. I'm kind of going in here and You're probably, you're probably noticing now that I'm getting a lot of faceting because I'm running out of geometry. Go back a little bit. You notice how you notice how in reference you, you want the you want the bone that nose poking out this way. So we need you to we need you exactly that. I've learned this for quite a long time in the model characters. Actually, it's a, it's a great exercise, and it also help also helps you too, so you don't get rusty. So go real quick and just fill in the mask there. Yeah, I'm running on geometry. In this case, for what we're doing, it's okay. You know, there's a reason why there's a reason why we're running on geometry. Oops. Go ahead real quick and lower down the uh, the depth on this. And because you know, in the past, we in the past have you Dynamesh before in the past, but you know, sometimes sometimes you know Dynamesh is great and everything, but you know, it doesn't always help us when we need it. All right, so now, so the next part we're gonna work on inside the head, the um, the um, temple, the temple, temple area of the head. So we'll go ahead here, the viewport, and start digging out a hole there. Um, usually on a real skull, it's pretty deep, but for our, but for this virtual skull, I won't go too far in. I know. Oh my 
gusto. That has a little more gusto because I'm doing it for. And usually, the, usually I use the clay toothbrush a lot. Clay tubes is really great for building up form and keeping a feel for the character or the sculpt. It makes you feel like it makes you feel like you're in control. It makes you feel like you're in control of your design. That's, that's one thing I love about ZBrush is when you're working working your sculptures, you are in control. You are the master of this of this canvas. This canvas is your world. And it's important to re to really have control of your canvas. And we're noticing there are little lines on the um, there are little lines emanating from the um, from the um, you call that the the brush. It's basically um, pinpointing where your reference points are on the um, on the image plane. This is great. If you if you're drawing if you're sculpting from like you know reference then you want to make sure everything everything's matching up. If I zoom out if I zoom out a little bit, I'm gonna try to zoom out a little bit. Actually, let me change my draw distance. The elevation is the one. Except for point, point one or something. There we go. That's a little more realistic, and we'll sit and also save here too, so that we don't lose our work. That's the one thing we don't want: is losing our work. So anyway, when I, when I draw right here, when I draw from here, see the lines? The lines are the lines are corresponding to the area in the sculpt. This is great. You want to make sure everything's matching up. I'm kind of going in and just touch right here. Usually it's pretty quick, but right now I'm just taking my time and making sure that I get the, the form that I'm correct. In this stage, of my design, this stage, of my design also help, also helps me, you know, determining the um, the age and the race of my character. I, I work in, when, I, when I'm not doing this, my spare time, I work I, I work in retail, and we and we see thousands. I, I see. Hundreds of people a day, and this is this process is very helpful when I'm working up when I'm working on my characters. Only here to start cutting out the um cutting out the um was like a matic bone. Like I'm going to pull my uh, my atlas back here, like right here. This little bone here. This is this is you know to, you know this is the um the cheekbone. It's the medical terms. This is called the zygomatic bone, and basically it runs from the cheek up to around, up around the eye socket. You know, it's kind of why if you ever feel the side of your head, your temples. I mean, you know, it must muscle there. But if you feel that, you'll feel a small bony ridge on the side of your head. So this, so this area here is the zygomatic bone. I'm modeling that, and then I'm also going to blend in carefully to the maxilla. Let's, 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 keep, let's keep going. So, so what I usually do is for this, I'm gonna start sculpting, gonna start sculpting out this area. And I'm no, and I'm no, I'm no expert in anatomy, but if you're a character artist, this is important. You, you, you want, you want to actually, you will actually want to start modeling your characters and, you know, start thinking more anatomically. So it's my usual, it's my usual process when I'm working on characters. You probably, you probably haven't noticed yet, but I have, I have not switched, I've not switched any levels yet of subdivision. Actually, I'll tell you why. In, I'll tell you why in a second. Why I haven't switched yet. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm now kind of going in, adding a, a forehead mass on my character. Yeah. 
you know, you, when I first did this, um, many years, a, couple, a few years ago, I had no idea I was going to be, you know, studying anatomy so, so aggressively. And I'm kind of glad I am now because, you know, it's, it really helps a lot, you know, in your design work. Kind of looking, kind of looking at the um, atlas here. See, see how the bones, how the see how the bones face, up, how the bones match up. But yeah, the yeah, the, yeah, the sun. You got really warm yesterday, and you know, dealing with allergies, and that's not fun to anybody. You know, there I say, allergies really suck. That's it. Because I'm kind of going in now and etching in. Yeah, um, the zygomatic bone and temp the temporal temporal bone, and I recommend too. Also, if you ever get a chance, you can, you can get your hands in an atlas. It's really, it has, it has helped me tremendously in my character designs. I mean, even even as far as improving, even as far as improving my own work as as a character artist. You know, usually, of course, this is probably usually, of course, I usually spend a lot of time. Um, modeling this section of the character's head. Usually, usually, usually pretty quick, but today, of course, I'm you know, I think I've done like two, three characters in the last year or so. You know, in my spare time, and it, ne it never, you know, I always learn something new, which I love about my field of um of computer graphics. You know, every time, I, every time I create, every time I create a new character, I learn something brand new. This part is getting too inflated, so we're gonna, we're gonna turn that down a bit. And that's the difficult part of um, but the, the difficult part of being a character artist is that there, there are many people in the world around us, you know. And sometimes, you know, it's sometimes we have we have ide we have ideals about how people look, you know. But basically, when I create my characters, I often think about you know. You know, you know, you know, what's the character's what you what know, what's the character's ethnicity? You know, how you know, how old is that character? You know, what kind of what kind of what kind of what kind of um challenges, you know, and and or sufferances has has the character endured. You know, for me, that though for me that always helps me create a better character. You know, how do you, you know how they look is cool and how they look is cool and everything. But for me of course how the character looks means nothing to me. I can't put a story to them. You know, I think I had a, I think I had, a had a character I create, created um a couple years ago. From, from my from my problem my game I'm working on, um, female character. And I and I got a, and I and I read a lot of, I read a lot of eyebrows when I um when I put a you know usually in video games you know usually in video games and movies the the late the the lady in the game the lady. It's all just you know flawless, you know, kind of like a Barbie doll kind of feel. And for me, it wasn't working. It wasn't working for me. You know, I want you know I wanted to I wanted to get away from the Barbie doll feel of the character of the character models. You know, and make and make a character that felt a little more real to me. And I got right, and I got a lot of questions asked me. You know, why why I added a scar in her face? Well, for me, you know, for me of course I wanted to add a little story to my character. And not and not only that, and not only my a three D artist. I'm also an author. I'm also a writer myself. And for me, I want for me, I wanted a character that you know had a had a little story to her. You know, it's it's all it's all it's all fun with visuals, but you know, sometimes you know I kind of feel like you know, real you know games are games are you know doing great on the graphical front, but unfortunately. It comes a story, you know, that, that comes some, that sometimes becomes a second thought, and we need, we need, we need to get back to that, you know, storytelling, making sure the you know, the, the gameplay and stories are just as important as the graphics. Uh, I talk too much. Let me get back to modeling here. So I um, so I'm still adding the um, I'm still bringing in this like magnetic bone, you know, I'm still tweaking it. We're still tweaking it right there. 
and it's very and it's very important that I make sure I get that form right. It's you know a 3D model like this one. It's not really easy to do, but you know it's it's a fun challenge. And right here, actually, like I mentioned already, I was running out of geometry. You see the faceting? I'm running, I'm running out of geometry right here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you why I haven't switched to Dynamesh yet. And while I like Dynamesh, I want to I want to I when I create a cat when I'm working with characters, I always want to I always want to try something different in my design. So I'm going real quick. Look at them, look at them all around and spin around and see what it looks like. Alright, so, so, so I'm going to jump your tab, go to your mesher, it's, it hits your mesh. You know, and you notice that if you ever model, if you ever model your character, like in ZBrush or, or any other clipping tool, so we look at this frame on, you'll see the, you'll see the distortion I'm dealing with here, when I, um, bring in my, bring in my side, bring in my, my, my side of bone. You know, so pretty much, so I'm also, not only that, I'm also going to be looking at my references, you know, and getting, trying to get a, and trying to get a feel of the design and see where it is. You know, um, basically the character, the characters are, the, your characters, you know, their facial appearance may, may differ, you know. It also depends on, you know, the character's ethnicity. You know, I mean, basically not everyone's the same, and that's important to me too for this character, my character designs. I try to create some sort of gen genuine feel to the character, to the character, and how they feel there. And I'm pausing right now in the video. I'm actually looking at my um, at my atlas here and seeing and see and seeing how important it is to get the anatomy right. So basically, so look at my reference here. Checking the um, reference and kind of trying to get a feel for the zygomatic bone. Yeah, you know, on a per on because, because you can't really tell because you know because so much because um usually a human being there's muscle there so you can't really see it clearly. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna go a little more on this. Let's go a little more. Sink in that part just a bit more. And and I'm also because sure I move the model around too when I'm working. That's another important element too when you work on your designs. You know, move the, you know, move that viewport around. This is this is a 3D program. You know, do not. I mean, if I have any advice for anyone doing this stuff, do not stay in one place. Because you know, if you stay, if you stay in one place, you know, your model, the model will flat. Keep going here. I'm kind of trying to, I'm trying to, um, kind of sink in this jawbone here. It's a little bit, you know, so I can get the uh, the feel that ridge there. You know, because in reality, because in reality, that ridge is free. It's pretty. You feel your cheekbone. You can poke your cheek, and you'll see that there's a little bridge there. In fact, let me turn my camera on. You can see my face. Let's see, see what I'm talking. So you can see my face. So here we go. So if you model your face right here, your cheek here. You, you, you know, there's, there's there's muscle. There's a layer of fat and muscle on my face. If you poke right here, you can feel your there's like a magnetic bone right here. Sitting here, you can't feel it here because it's a big muscle right here. The, um, the jaw muscle right here, but you can feel you can feel there. You can feel it from here. You see like a magnetic bone. So, so, so pretty much now, that's what I'm trying to do. I want to create that little ridge in the face. You know, if you, you know. One of my in my personal experiences, you know, I people I people watch. I um, you know, you know, grow, you know, you know, growing up on the spectrum. I you know, one of my one of my um key skills I've grown grown up with is um the ability to study people's faith, the ability to study people. You know, there are you know, it may sound creepy, but you know, if you're an artist, you create characters. You know, you know, you know, ask somebody, ask you, you go to a park one day, you know, ask somebody, not ask somebody very nicely. If you can, if you can draw their face, or you know, sit with them on draw, you know, you will believe the you will believe the unbelievable response you get as an artist if you, you know, if you, if you genuinely draw people. So, so now, so now we're running on geometry now. Just, you can see the faceting. So, what I normally do is I go to zero measure, and hit the button there. 
And what this, and this, what this will give you is a metric sculpt arm. See, there you have it. Notice how the polygon count went down, went down a little bit. Okay, watch, watch, watch this, watch this, watch this. And you'll see, notice how too, you see how the geometry accommodated my changes. So, now I can, now, now I can keep sculpting, you know, keep, keep refining the form until it feels right to me. <laughs> so, I wanna go up here, I'm gonna go up here now, and we're changing the material too. I'm gonna, try, I'm, gonna hit, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put a, I'm gonna put a mask on here because I want the um, I want that hard, I want that hard ridge of the um, of the of the temp, of the temporal of, of the temporals here. And usually, my model characters like the or model cranium, I do I do not want um, and I try to not I try to I try to not have um, sub D's turned on because I'm like this because. Some of, these are, some of these are great when you're, when you're doing a, um, when you're massaging your form, but I usually will model the, model the character like this, you know, with the full, the full form. And also to my ear, here he goes, my ear, usually go here, where the ear usually goes. But right now the ear might be added, yeah, I'll be adding in the next video. I do want to add, when I um, start adding skin and muscles to the character. A little bit more in this one, I'm gonna go a little bit more. You know, to give the impression of the other deep muscle, of the yeah, other deepness of the skull. And also, too, bear in mind that um, there are also teeth in your skull as well. And the teeth, haven't added that. I haven't added the teeth yet, so I'm gonna start, you know, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to iron out the, um, the jawline and character and get a feel for it. Now, this character I'm working on, you know, actually, this character is a, well, he's a wizard. You know, as you see in previous video by his robes and his his muscular his musculature is not really strong, I mean, which is which is good, you know, because you know as, as a character artist, as as, char as character artists, you know, we gotta be able to get out of our comfort zone and not create you know the typical muscular superhuman muscle man that, that we're all used to. You know, especially for me as an artist, I uh, I spend t I try to spend a lot of time getting my comfort zone, and I think after this after this character, I want to. Take a break from creating humans, you know, and, and start tackling uh, start tackling uh, animals. You know, as much as I love as much as I love humans and everything, um, creating animals, creating animal characters is actually a very a very rewarding a very rewarding experience. You learn, you you learn so much more about nature when you, when you, when you observe animals, you know, and how they, and how they react to their environment. Kind of going in there and looking the bone a little bit, and this is this is probably the most this is probably the most involved I've ever been on a character design or creating a particular character. Actually, let me go with zero measure and double the polygon count. <laughs> Let's go a little more on polygon count. Right, there we go. That's better. I can I can work with this. So there's so there's no so there's no faceting on this model. You can, so this way when I model the characters on detail, you know you notice a seam on here as well. Um on a, on a real on a real human being, um there is very there's symmetry there's symmetry. If there's a little bit on a human being, there's a little bit of asymmetry on a human being. And that's what I want to create. I want to make sure that asymmetry is there in the character. Yeah, let me comb this jaw a little bit. Oh, but I could, I could, I could probably leave it like this because um, there's gonna be there's, there's muscle on here, but I'm gonna pull this a little bit. And go to the back of the head, and just not pulling that in too. You're probably noticing too that I, right, in, 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 in please re please um, understand that I'm um, working in character. Move around the viewport. Do not stay in one place too long. You know, basically treat this like you're, treat this like you're buffing the shoe. <laughs> you know, have you ever been, you know, you know, have you ever seen, you know, ever been to like a, um, like an air, like an old shop or airport? I think I was in, I was in, um, San Francisco recently, and for, in, in the first time I was, I was like, wow, I, I saw, so, I saw someone, I saw a shoe shine, a shoe shine person, um, shining shoes, you know, something I haven't seen in a long time. 
and you know, and of course, me being me being curious, I still didn't wash them, you know, wash them shoes. And I know, and I noticed that, and I noticed too, is that the apology shoes, um, they don't stay in one place, which is good. And you want the you want that same attitude here when you work in ZBrush and your sculpts, do not stay in one place. Use a pinch brush and start pinching, pinching, uh, pinching the bone where I want it. There we go. Just wait out a little bit. That pinch, that, that pinch point. I don't want that pinching on the model. You notice how too I'm still trying to fix the um, because you know it's a little weird because you know it's a little very really strange because I want the face. The face is um. This character's not this car these characters are not they're not photorealistic either. They won't be they won't be hyper real or anything like that. You know. I love I love some I love some realism. I love some realism, but you know, I I like having, you know, a little bit of stylized realism as well. You know, keeping a little giving the character a little style. Yeah. <laughs> looking at this guy. Look at this guy here, you know. Not much of like, you know, that what's his name on Ghost Rider. <laughs> Ghost Rider, what a cool character, by the way. So I'm going here, and I'm still, I'm still trying to get the um, the heatness in the face there. Muscle in the face. I'm just um, choosing materials to take a few of the character. Yeah, I was just really kicking my butt today, so I'm kind of you know trying to like trying to like you know survive this one. This um session here, too much without too much issue. Yeah, the one the one kit, one drip, one drawback using the measure is um. <laughs> Is you will lose geometry pretty quickly. Like right going there, add a little more to the face. And again, I'm and again, I'm I'm no I'm no I'm no doctor or anatomy expert. You know, this is the, this part always excites me. I mean, creating character. And I think I can I can I can now add the mouth. Maybe one was my measure. All right, here we go. And I apologize for any jumps in audio. I'm having a sneezing fit. And it's kind of hard to record you sneezing and cough, sneezing and sniffling sometimes. So I apologize in advance for that. And actually, this is a good time to use um, Dynamesh now. So let's turn it on. Let's just find um, Dynamesh. Yeah, so with Dynamesh, I tend to like try to find a nice middle ground for like detailing, and it's not working now. So let's see here. So let's go to one. None of that too. For some odd reason, um, Dynamesh doesn't like my um. Like if you work at a certain scale, it will actually. Here we go. That's a little better. Um, usually Dynamesh, you work at a certain amount, a certain amount of scale. I guess a certain scale. I guess. It may not. It may not like your mod, your um, your resolution until you like turn it really high or something. So you notice how we're near two thousand. You know, I want to avoid that as much as possible. But this gives us enough real estate here to work on the geometry and start smoothing out stuff. 
So I'm kind of going in real quick and just need to make some adjustments. It's moving out the um, the geometry a bit. Nothing matters right now because I'm gonna because after after the session I'm gonna be adding um adding muscle on top of this. But I want to go in and like you know start adding adding the jaw adding the um pressing the jaw jaw bone and everything. You also add we also add the um mouth now. And the mouth is a barrel. You know, you know, you, you know. You can look at a person and say, "Okay, the mouth, the mouth looks smooth," but it is. Like, I keep, but I um, I assure you, it is not. A, it is not smooth. You know, see the lip. That looks like the lips are barrel shaped. It actually pull. It actually looks like it's a barrel. So I'm going like this. It actually looks. You know, you have you have you have your your the, the, the on your nose is a small little ridge there. You know, it's actually it's actually um the bone the um this little tiny bone on your nose on the bottom of your no on the um bottom into your nose and it's important to get that right while remembering that the mouth is a barrel shape and we're going in and also tumble also you working your model please tumble the viewport and don't be afraid of it. Don't be, afraid, don't be afraid to turn the world, turn, 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 turn the world upside down a little bit. In this, in this um, we mod, we work in the ZBrush. I often, I often, I do this all the time, and basically, all the time, and basically, I learn so much from this process. I um, I build, I build the um, face here, and I'm also, and I'm also, and right now too, I'm adding the um, the form of the maxilla a little bit. This is kind of why this is kind of why I taught low res work high res. Um, if you remember, if you remember, if you remember my pizza analogy, don't be so, do not be so quick to put top into put top into the pizza yet until the dough's right. That's most that's the most important thing I learned when I first started using ZBrush. You know, I mean, I I think I I think I ruined many a good pizza or pancake. You know, but you know, by you know, by flipping the pancake too soon. Basically, that that same that same that same principle applies here too. Kind of going in and shopping, shopping right now. I'm at hundred thousand polygons, and important to go in and shopping things up a little bit. And also too, this 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 stage also prepares me for um adding adding the um mouth and filling in stuff like. This. Muscle cavity and the eyes and stuff of that nature. I'm going here and just kind of smooth out a little bit. This part, very, this part is very important to me. I want to make sure it looks right to me too. Basically, modeling the face is probably probably the one of the most tedious um, processes in my design. You know, on any part any part of the character, usually the but usually. Usually, like for usually for fixing proportions on a character, the face is almost eighty percent of the time the one getting tweaked the most. I'm kind of, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm kind of and I'm kind of glad that in the, in the CG world, in the, in the virtual world, there's no um, there's no court system <laughs> for pain and suffering. And I think I put I think I put this model through a lot of pain and suffering in the last um forty minutes. Usually, usually this is pretty much it at this point when I am um, working my model, like this one. It's um pretty, it's pretty fun actually. If you think about it. I kind of want to go in a little bit and see what I missed. You know, and usually at this process, I want to make sure that's right and that that it'll work out for me too when I finish this. Notice how I. You know, hauling up in the um, the nasal cavity this is where the nose will go. And I'm also going to be coming over and you know, just adding adding that little little raging mill your forehead there. Let me show this in here too. And usually, a human skull has a very, I guess you could say, a very sad, very sad look. You know, you know, happy sad or something like that. I call it that. 
Yeah, can I, 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 I can do that, right? Happy, sad? <laughs> Happy and sad at the same time. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the edge, I'll turn on the edge a little bit so I can see where everything is. I'm kind of going in and just um, pulling the, the um, piece of the skull out a little bit, eye sockets and whatnot. <laughs> Pull this part in too. Pull on the uh, maxilla. Yeah, basically, um, the skull is a. Uh, I guess I call. I can call it happy, sad, or yeah, it's very plaintive. But this is the um, this this is where like you feel you feel your the edge of your the bump, feel your eyebrow over here. There's a little roll. There's a little ridge on the on your eyebrow. That's where this falls in. The place. And eventually, and eventually, this will form like you know, this will form the um, folds in your face, like, like basically, like you have a like, like you have a frown, or you know, make a frown, or reach your eyebrows up. This the skull is not moving. It's it's, it's, a, it's a layer of muscle that's going over this. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to come back a little bit and look around the skull and make sure that looks, that looks right to me. That it feels right. You know, I'm not an expert. I'm going to keep repeating it. I'm going to fill this in, fill this in a little bit. Because I'm, because I'm on a real skull, it goes pretty deep, but we're not going that deep. You know, you know I don't want to go too deep and spend, spend a lot of time having to dig that out. You know, that little trench there. I'm going in and... I'm kind of going in and just you know, drawing these out. Yeah. And also, also too, diet emissions tend to soften your model a little bit too. You know, which is why, which is why I, I tried, which is when I used it before on the body, I use um, see, I use also too on like a close, a close proximity or objects, like fingers and feet. The diamonds will stick in your model, and you're trying to avoid that as much as possible. I'm going in there. Okay, it's too far out. Go ahead and just sink that back in there. Real carefully. <clears throat> yeah, so this part here, we'll pull this part out. You basically want this in there so that it'll like you like you to feel a part of your nose. It's I mean, if you ever if you if you ever like, you know, see a an anatomical model drawing of a nose, like right here. This, this area, if you pull the like you're in the car, the skin, the cartilage, you'll see this area right here in the skull, and that's what we want. So I'm kind of going in and change in this tweaking parts that I want. I mean, I'll admit though too, and also too, one thing too as well is with, with, with practice you'll get better at your model and the cranium sculpting. Um, when, I'm, when I'm on the when I'm on the cranium, I always have a reference in the background, just just to look at to see what I'm messing up, what's wrong, or what I'm messing up on. Just gonna add, just gonna add some planes here to make it feel a little more bony to me, so that when I look at the model later. I can, I can go back and fix stuff that we messed up on it. Yeah. So yeah, so basically, you guys are you guys are a model, a character, or anything like that. You know, just take your time, and you know, if you, I mean, if you're in a, you know, if you're in the industry, you know, but yeah, it's unfortunate sometimes. Um. Sometimes um, you, you know, deadlines are important, and you know I understand that a lot. It's important to follow the deadlines. But you follow the deadline. Make sure you're on time with your design. So I'm kind of going in now with some um, a little bit. You know, and also doing also also you know, too with the this cavity here, we feel a muscle. You know, done with everything. Checking my angles, to make sure that you know everything feels correct. A 
looking at this right now. I mean, I can say I can say I'm pretty much done right now with this. Oh, actually, not quite. Oh, there's a part of me I want to fix. So like right here, it's right here inside there. And I'm just trying to see. Actually, it's, it's pretty good actually. I'm gonna go ahead and real quick and just add a little, add a little um, that that, that, that little. You feel your forehead. You feel your forehead. It's not really smooth. I'm kind of going in right now. You know, I'm sure someone who, who understands anatomy more than I do will put up put up my flaws in this model. I want them to. You know, any flaws that I have here, you know, it'll help me. It'll help me improve my large margin. You know, but pretty much, um, people most everyone most most skull most everyone skulls um are pretty much the same structure. Aside from like any kind of changes, like um, like this character is Caucasian, so sometimes sometimes uh, the skull is narrow, sometimes the skull is narrow in the back, or sometimes your different ethnicity, your um your your, cr your cranium is like your cranium is a little bit your cr your head is a little your head your head's a little longer, you know than you know a little longer than usual the usual um. Lay out your skull. I'm kind of going in here and using a flattened brush to get some planes in the face a little bit so that it looks a little more. I don't want to call it geometric, I guess, but I usually don't do it. Usually I avoid using the, the uh, flattened brush, but in this case, I will. In this case, kind of a, it, it just looks it just looks visually visually um. Interesting to me to try to get that that look, the Aquarian look. And you, and of course, it's important as if you're a ZBrush artist, it's important even your artists of characters or in anything you do. I encourage you to practice. You know, with with your time and practice, you will get better. You know, that's in anything you do, any any kind of passion you have, whether it's music, cooking, or otherwise, even I mean, even even athletes practice. You know, and we you know, and I'm treating this like an like I'm an like I'm an athlete. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm you know, I'm a I'm a CG athlete. You can say. And basically, the more you practice, the better you will get. Go real quick with this. I'm pretty much done. You're pretty much finished, actually. This is pretty much the. You're pretty much finished here with this. This is um, pretty much the final. Well, the finished skull. Oh. One thing we add before I depart, I also before I before I leave, I want, the guy's the guy's a man, so I want to go ahead and add the um the sternomastoid muscle in his neck there. I put my put my atlas. I put my atlas and have the muscle. You you basically you basically want. I basically want this muscle right here. It's called the sterno sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is um if you ever if you ever turn your head you ever turn your head or or, or touch your neck muscles up, you'll see the little the little uh right there. Let me, let me put my camera and show you what little muscle looks like. You know what I'm talking about, but real quick. So neck muscle right here, bring your neck. Also goes all the way down here, get to your to your clavicle right here, a little line right there. Where the muscle go? And basically, I'm, I study my I try to study anatomy as much as possible when I'm creating my characters. You know, whether 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 it be human or alien. So I'll I'll just go real quick and just draw an impression of it. Just an impression of it, because usually for me, um, usually right here, like right over here. Where the clavicles would be on this model, but it's hitting my clothes, so we won't, we won't, I won't go too crazy with this. Let's go real quick and start adding that muscle in there. Oh boy, allergies are not my friend today, so hopefully. A little Claritin, I'll be A-OK. -okay. All right, so I'm just going real quick, add this in there. 
And of course, in the final design, you want, this muscle won't, this muscle won't be seen in full detail because um, mainly, of course, you know, characters, the characters, you know, not muscular or anything like that, not very athletic. He's more like an average man. So basically, I want him to be more like an average man. So let's go here real quick and add it in there. And I'm sure someone tell me it's wrong. And it's okay. I want you, I want um, you know basically the good thing about our, about CG in general is you know the more you practice, the more you get better at it. And it's important to me that I practice data. Like, you know, it's like you know, it's like it's like it's like it's like martial arts or you know any kind of sport you play. You you know the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. I'm kind of going there real quick and creating this little thing right here. This impression of it. And I'm, do, and I'm doing this now so that when I quit the so that I quit the actual skin and muscle top of the carrot, the actual skin and muscle, this will be there. So I'm kind of going there. And also too, on this guy, I want an Adam's apple. You know, he's actually um he's this guy's he's, this character, you know. He's not very muscular, so one of them Adam's a little Adam's apple. So I write about right if I if I don't point out where it is, right 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 right, right over here. On his neck there. Kind of going in a little bit. This is beauty of Dynamesh. Um I remember in Z Russian in the past, before I had Dynamesh, creating these forms and retaining your creating creating your cellular density was a pain was a pain in the neck. So if I so I'm going to Dynamesh now, like this, I'm going to project, boom, I'm going to do that. Basically, any two that I made here, control drag, boom, it all changed right there. And your polygon count will increase too, which is great. I actually love, I actually love Dynamesh, and, and I wouldn't change anything about it. In, you know, and in, in Z here too, so it's definitely a good little, a good little program, a good little feature in ZBrush. The um, basically um, dynamic dynamic um tessellation. I'm going there smoothing out in that detail here, but as I said, um, in the final in the final build of this character, you will not you won't have any, you, um, you won't have any insane um muscle detail on this character. So basically, I want him to be, you know, like an average man. I'm going in real quick and just tweaking, tweaking this up a little bit. I'm going in, I'm going in and giving the impression of a masseter. Actually, I'm sitting in this muscle. Yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah, the little jaw muscle. It's called, it's, it's, this right here is called the masseter. Muscle, which is a superficial muscle on top of the uh, jaw, top of the jaw bone there, the man, the uh, the mandibles. It's kind of going in, it's a few things. What you conclude here? You know, usually, of course, when I create my characters, I'm usually, you know, usually I obsess with detail sometimes, and which is, you know, it can be, it can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your position of your design. I mean, and plus two. My reason, also two. My reason for um, recording my series is because you know I have, an, I have an issue with perfectionism, and I think by record, I think by, I think by recording myself working, I actually, I actually get my my work done a lot faster this way. You know, you know, basically the old, basically the old saying, go, basically you know, you, you know, you gotta crack the whip. You know, when you're working, you're, when you're working on when you're pro personal projects or Deadline. Okay, one thing I want to be of a big perfectionist is it's good sometimes to be, to be perfection. But it's a fine line between being a perfectionism and obsession. And I want to make I want I want to make sure that although I stay within the realm of perfectionism, you know, being making my work, you know, decent and perfect, you know, you want to stay, you know, you want to stay away from obsession. Because uh, obsession could hurt your design. 
big time in a way. Especially you work, especially on a team of artists, you do not want you, you know, you know, you gotta you gotta, you gotta let it go. When you work on something like this, and I think I'm and I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to conclude this session. So I'm just you know going into a final spot check and let's go in here and fill this back up. So I'm going in to do a little spot check, make sure I have everything I need. For now, skull looks pretty, looks pretty good actually. I like it. I want to real quick and just tighten up the um, all those stuff, the eye socket, the old, the um, the eye socket a bit. Make sure it's um, you know, make sure it feels like a very bony ridge because we're gonna because we're because we're gonna fill this in and you know, in the next in the next video, I'm gonna be adding muscle, to adding adding the um. The features on top of this, and this is this is where zero measure will come in handy for um for things like this. A little more, kind of go kind of going kind of tight right here. Make sure make sure it feels tight right here. Kind of tight, and of course, like I tell of course, you know, one thing that's important as an artist is I if you if you're working on your model or personal project. You know, if you're fast, that's awesome. You know, speed, speed, speed is sometimes good. Also, remember that speed kills. So, if you're just learning, you know, especially, especially learning how to quit characters, I please take, please, please, please take your time. You know, if, if you're doing a pro, if you're doing a personal project for yourself or portfolio, portfolio piece, you know, remember, you have no time. You have no time constraints. Take your time. You know, enjoy the enjoy the process. You know, learn how it works. Because if anything, when you rush, because um, when you rush, when you try to rush, it shows you work. And especially trying to get a job or you're working on work with somebody, you know, and they love your work. You know, if anything, take your time. You know, enjoy enjoy the enjoy the process. You know, think of it. Think of think of modeling like a walk in the park. You know, you want to make sure. You know. Taking all the taking all taking all the scenery, walk around a little bit. Take your time. Don't, don't, don't be in a hurry. So at this point, I'm going to stop here. You know, the skull's pretty much finished here. And in the next video, I'm going to be adding skin and muscle on top of this. So on behalf of Chaos Graphics, this is Kashif saying, "Have a wonderful day. Keep creating, and happy sculpting."